Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in this video, I am going to be going over if there is a such thing as work-life balance in cybersecurity. That being said, what does that mean? Is it a new term, buzzword? Did this just happen to appear as a, one of those mainstream buzzwords in 2020 when COVID hit? Um, yeah, so let's just dive in and see if that really exists in cybersecurity and how that plays out in your career, future, trends, uh, you name it. So that being said, let's get into this video. So as I said, this video is, is there such thing as work-life balance in cybersecurity? Well, from my experience and the honest answer, and again, I grew up in a different era, generation. I have different different takes on things, different takes on life, um, not just opinions. I don't, to set the record straight, I don't go off of beliefs, opinions. I go off of experiences, facts, data. Um, I do not go on opinions and beliefs. Um, I know some people won't like that, uh, but you know, me being a former manager, leader, um, since a kid, football captain of the team, both offense and defense, um, being a leader, I got to get the job done. I got to perform. I got to excel. Uh, you can't take any setbacks or feel sorry or do this. A leader is there to perform, get the job done, and win at the end of the day. So that's where I come from, from this standpoint, me looking in. Again, I'm not going off of emotions, uh, beliefs, um, even too much empathy or whatever term they want to go off of and use or whatever, you know, all that mimicky, gimmicky shit. I don't do that. I don't play that. So when it's all said and done, right, I don't think there is a such thing as work-life balance in cybersecurity. Um, the more you the more the more you put into it is what you're gonna get out of it, pretty much like anything in life. That being said, what do I mean by that? You can't be comfortable. You can't go to college or get that one cert. I'll speak for offensive security. I got my OSCP. I can just put my feet on the desk and chill. No. Those that know that I've been in the technology sector know that technology, since I've been in the actual technology sector working since 2005, every year, every two years, this thing has just increased as far as technology changing, threat level changing, whether it's on physical or cybersecurity, and those two blending in. Everything has been changing at a rapid pace. I remember when I got laid off at Box in between my time there and uh, well, my current job, I did a podcast for executive protection. Um, I kind of, you know, my friend, uh, one of the hosts, not him, but per se, the person that was asking me some of the questions, um, you could tell that they were like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Um, Pretty much I went over, you know, where it's going to go for tomorrow, not just today. Um, that being said, I'll give you an example of what I said in that podcast. Executive protection is going to change. And for those that know what I'm talking about, have seen the movie Elysium, right? And those that, that are born and raised in California and have seen, seen the changes in California, LA, Bay Area, know that that's pretty much how life is right now, Elysium. Hence, Bay Area, Silicon Valley, uh, HQ, San Jose, what has popped out of there? Neuralink, right? What happened in that movie Elysium? Similar device in the head or in, implanted in the brain that holds corporate data, right? So what does that mean? That means now when you have to extract that data as an executive protection, extract the uh, a person, employee, you have to extract that piece and that data, depending on, let's just say you have to extract that data from a different device and implant it into your Neuralink. Now, how does that change the outlook and the game of executive protection, physical security? Because now you hold company data, data which means how, uh, how much of your brain does the company own now, right? And again, this is for tomorrow, but however, what happened? Neuralink got approved. It's already in two or three patients, I believe now. Um, now it's here. And in that video, I thought I said five to 10 years, it's here. And in the Silicon Valley that those that know that have been there, 
What do most of those executives want? They want the latest and greatest cool technology. Mind you, they will have that. It's very, very soon. So now that's gonna change everything. And I know I might have went on a tangent, but just keep this in mind. That's how fast technology is changing. That being said, you have to be on top of your game. You can't let the pedal off the metal. You can't let the, the, you can't stop. You have to keep going. Now, that's not saying F your kids, forget about your marriage, your family. No, you have to learn how to be very good in time management. You got to have to learn how to be accountable and be consistent. Now, my issue is I'm not consistent in other things. I'm more consistent on the shit I need to handle to get done as far as certs, technologies I need to learn, um, technologies I need to learn like fast if there's an incident that I'm going to have to you know manage, create my notes, et cetera, my, my playbooks on how I would use them, what I would look for as far as from a red team offensive security standpoint. So there's a lot in cybersecurity. And honestly, in my opinion, you can't learn, you can't just stop at your niche. Example, offensive security, you got to understand threat hunting. You got to understand GRC. You got to understand certain things on how a CISO looks at it because that could affect your job, especially in the sector that you're in. And also all the way to the top as a CIO. And not only that, you got to understand the trends and, and the areas of what your organization is touching, right? Uh, give you an example. Um, let's just say working at Carnival Cruises is not going to be the same at Facebook, right? They're going to be, I mean, granted, the framework concepts is offensive security is going to be the same, but you're going to touch different things. Possibly even more um, on the cruise line, you're going to be heavily more comp uh, compliant heavy. Um, so I'm not saying that's not going to happen at Facebook, but it's probably going to be more on that side because those crews uh, house data from their customers, not just credit cards, personal data, passports, different IDs, etc. So that's what you also got to look and throw into the picture. You got to also, and not only that, it's even good to look, especially if you're getting stocks or RSU or you're invested on your own into the company that you're working with in the financial markets. What's hitting the financial markets, especially on the threat level? Does your organization use Bitcoin? You know, there's a whole web to, to, to uh, get a good deep dive. But that being said, I'm going to nail, uh, rail it back. You have, to, you have to keep going. You can't stop. You can't get comfortable. You like me next year, uh, people say I, I've been called a cert collector. I'm like, I'm not a cert collector. Now, if these were multiple choice tests, I could see that. But these are not offensive security, at least. The ones I'm doing are actual practical exams, uh, meaning you're getting that experience. Uh, same as Hack the Box doing, uh, you know, their VMs, even some things on TriHack, most things on TriHack me. So now, next, you know, I've done a lot of search this year, still have some to, to knock out. Next year, I'm going into the cloud. Uh, cloud's going to be real big. Um, also, AI, if I could find those trainings or certs, I'm definitely getting into that next year. I just haven't really set it on YouTube because I haven't seen that training yet. Um, so that's another avenue that I want to get into as well. So you have to pretty much align yourself up to not just be better than where you were yesterday, but you got to be better than your competition. Now you got to actually sell your value with AI coming down the line. And I'll, you know, use it if you're a consultant going outside, um, you know, on your own as a consultant, your own business internally, you're at a startup. How, why, you're going to have to be able to leverage your skill set and sell your value on why you're better than a Horizon or Core Impact. If you, you know what I mean. Why should I hire you instead of getting that? Uh, internally for now until I'm able to scale my my business or organization. That's where I'm coming from, right? You not only have the competition for me, all the young, all the young bucks coming. Now I got AI, bring it on. You know, that's just how I look at it. Again, I'm I come from a different era, different age. I don't have this what I see this new generation. I'm not knocking all you guys, but the majority of it is, you know, a lot of people don't want to work because they want the work-life balance. They want the unlimited PTO. They want the nap in the quiet rooms in the office. And, you know, people complaining to HR about construction going off while shit needs to get done in the building. So you have your AC, so you have your food in your kitchen, so you have power, you know, so you can charge your electric vehicles. 
Uh, you know, you got to drill and, and core through concrete sometimes in those buildings. And yes, I know and done this from experience because I used to work in facilities, workplace services, real estate, whatever you want to call it. And I've had those issues before with certain generation types. So that being said, I'm just going to go over my top three issues about, you know, work-life balance, takes you out of being consistent, accountable. Relationships. Relationships is probably the big, biggest one. And I've actually had this during my OSCP earlier in the year. I'm not going to get into what I did, but I regret what I did. And my goal and not just her, but also my kids, I pretty much zeroed them out. And my goal was failure is not an option for this OSCP. That was it. I'm not telling you guys to be like that. I'm not saying that's how you got to be. That's what I look at. I look at pretty much when I get into the zone, failure is not an option. I look at it, is this my bread and butter? I got to do whatever I got to do to keep this roof over my head and feed my kids. That's how I look at it. Life or death, predator or prey. That's how I look at these types of things. Um, I got to scale that back and make time for her, kids, you know, that's, that's unsat. I shouldn't be like that, but yeah, I got to change that. Um, that's one thing I got to work on is to, to be able to better my time management. And, you know, I was after that OSCP, I mean, literally when there was free time during the day, like I said, I was doing this with a coworker. Um, we were, we had in between time, some downtime for work. We were hopping on, on training, um, doing like we were doing an actual engagement. Dante, some of the boxes from Hack the Box, try Hack Me from, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, was it Ipsec? Or Tiberius's list, uh, you know, for OSCP. And we were just nonstop till 12, 1130, 12 p.m. CST. She's in Eastern, uh, you know, till 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, my time. And she was an hour ahead. So that's how pretty much I took it. Um, once all that stuff settled in, I had to, you know, dial it back and be more consistent. However, I still put my pedal to the metal. Um, I'm still going at it hard. Um, however, you, you do have to find to make time, especially your kids. Uh, that's not fair. It's not right. But you cannot stop. You still got to keep going. Um, and sometimes those things where you have trips planned or whatever, if it's critical, especially if you have a time commitment, because some jobs say, you know, that you want to get it between once you get hired, you have three to six months sometimes to get the cert. You got to put that ahead because you might get laid off. They might not extend it or give you any, you know, leeway. So that's how I look at those kind of type of things. I know it's, it's different, uh, my approach. And again, I'm not telling you guys to be like me. I'm not saying that my, my way is the best. However, what I am saying is be consistent on your time and also have time management for not just that, but also everything else. Um, that falls in line in your life. Um, second is fun. Um, I am the Hank Moody of security, but I have changed a lot since that time frame. Now, you know, for those that know me, I like to, I used to like to go work at Hooters all the time, just go have fun and, you know, live that life. But now, you know, I hit a point to where I've established my concrete foundation I want to get back into a management, senior manager role in offensive security. Um, you know, I got to change some things. Uh, I got to dial it in, um, less off the fun, and start hammering through. And that's not just certs, studying. That's also researching new tools, playing with new tools, learning those new tools in and out. Uh, you know, one of the key things I wanted to do last year was also build out my own uh, pen test box in Ubuntu. Uh, from scratch, uh, because sometimes, you know, my Cali distro might be corrupt. I might lose my thumb drive, whatever. You know, I wanted to play some kind of scenario in my head to where I have to do this manually and build it out myself. So stuff like that outside of certs, learning, researching new threats, what threat actors are using. Oh, excuse me. How are we going to play these into our uh, red team uh, adversary uh, simulation, stuff like that? Going through some of those TTPs, how can I utilize them? Learning, understanding the techniques, you know, all that stuff. Getting a, a knowledge base so if someone asks you, you know it like the back of your hand. And I don't know all of them. Things change. But, you know, get that mind flow and, and having that time allocated, being consistent and learning those new things. 
Um, I'm not saying you can't have fun because I have fun myself, but you know, there's going to be times where you got to say no. Things change, things come up. I got to learn something new. This technology is emerging. We got this new tool. I got to put in time to learn in Dark Trace. We went from Sentinel One to CrowdStrike. I got to get my ass and hop on um, uh, CrowdStrike training. That's free. That you know, there it's part of our deal. Utilize that. I, they have different sectors. I did the threat hunting myself. So that's that's you know, kind of the mindset you have to be at. And you know, don't just do it just to do it. Do it so you actually know it in and through. And again. You could add that to your resume. No one knows the future, especially some of these economic impacts that we are having. It might not be the job you want if you do get laid off, but you have that skill set to get something. And again, that's going to put you ahead of the curve on the top list of the resume, especially if you're, you know, you're a prime time, meaning you're like Deion Sanders. You could play both offense and defense, not just at a bare minimum, but you could uh, be highly efficient at both. That's the kind of mindset you got to have. That's the kind of mindset I, I want to have um, as a you know threat hunting um, perspective. Um, I'm nowhere near that. I still got to learn and build up my skills, but that's where I want to be able to land. Uh, you know, in case something happens, I'm not putting down threat hunting or IR or anything like that. That's just you know I'm preferably comfortable in offensive security. That's what I love. Uh, that's what I love doing. But I look at it like that from an economic standpoint as well as reality. Reality is going to kick in sometime. It's not all fairy tales, rainbows, and lollipops. So that being said, that's that's the second one is fun. Sometimes you got to put an end to it. It's going to change, meaning you cannot have fun. You just got to push it out. Third, competition. Healthy competition is what I like. Um, I used to like crazy competition when I was younger playing sports. But that's goals, being competitive to yourself with goals that are attainable, not unrealistic, obviously, because you're going to more than likely get nowhere. Second, being ahead of the trends and the curve of cybersecurity space, not just in your niche, but as a whole. Uh, I think that's critical to understand the whole arena of cybersecurity, the different fields, GRC, incident response, threat hunting, offensive security, et cetera, SOC. So that I think is key to at least have an understanding in how they work, not just in your sector, but also other sectors, if you have time for that. Um, and then what all that stuff that I just aligned to at the end of the day, what I think is key is going to keep your resume updated and fresh up to date. And that hopefully will get you ahead of the top um, on these plat platforms such as LinkedIn, Indeed, et cetera, because your resume is not only polished in your niche, but you also have um, a dual triple threat, meaning offensive security, threat hunting, incident response, GRC, uh, project management, program management experience, stuff like that. So those are key, I think, um, you know, as far as if there is such thing as work-life balance, which I don't think there is. Now, I might look at work-life balance as a different way. Uh, again, my way is old school, but when it's all said and done, security is a 24-7 job, whether you like it or not. Um, offensive security has nothing really to do if, if you're outside looking in, oh, no, 24-7 incident response. Bullshit. You're there helping, assisting, at least for my, I am, uh, as a threat hunter and also as a quote-unquote consultant to see how you would do it as a red teamer, pen tester uh, perspective, right? Uh, going over stuff with incident response. Even if you find something, doing some possibly even some purple teaming through that. So that being said, is there work-life balance for the most part? No. In my opinion, no. You always got to keep at it. You always got to push the pedal to the metal. However, if you're able to allocate and be good at time management, I think it will work out. Um, however, you also got to be really, really flexible. And if you have a relationship, uh, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, they also got to be flexible as well because sometimes, you know, work calls. Uh, to 20, security is 24-7. And also you got to keep everything fresh and keep, keep learning. So that being said, work-life balance, no. But is it slavery? No. You just got to have good time management and be ahead and be on top of your A-game. So that being said, that's the video. Uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about work-life balance. Um, does it exist? Do I look at it differently? Do you agree, not agree? Go ahead and comment. Uh, until then, see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.